Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well. Oh boy, we have some very interesting news and an update that has literally just come in as I've decided to start recording this video for you guys and I'm about to share it with you and it's good news, it's good news, or oh, it's a good indication, it's a good indication, but... Before we get into all of that, I want to say thank you to everyone that has watched the last two videos and smashed the like barrier for 5,000 likes and about to do it again on yesterday's video. We're, we're close, very close. There's just a couple of hundred left. Um, and honestly, thank you, thank you, thank you. If it keeps going at this rate, I'm going to have to up it. So, <laughs> again, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, smash that like button for me if you uh, haven't already. Let's try and hit that 5,000 like barrier. And if you are new, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. I told you on yesterday's video that today I was going to talk about two things our goalkeeper situation and a certain link with a certain goalkeeper who I'm going to discuss and the latest on Declan Rice and is it happening what's the latest on that now I, I, I'm going to talk about that but I feel like it's only right to talk about the latest update that has literally just happened so I'm going to share that with you first and then we'll talk about our goalkeeper and Declan Rice um, and the stories around those so let's start off now just before Thiago Silva was announced, you might have noticed on the Chelsea Twitter account, there was a tweet about Ben Chilwell with the picture of Ben Chilwell in, in a Chelsea shirt. And it was a really nicely um, produced image. Um, very, very good editing in our media department at the club. So fair play to all of them, whether it's video or photo, they have done a tremendous job. But there was a an, an image of Ben Chilwell that was pinned. Just before the silver announcement, Chelsea took that off. Well, not took it off. They, they, they unpinned it. Now, if you don't know what pinning means, it means that as soon as you go onto a Twitter page, it's the first tweet that you see. It's been pinned at the top of the page. Now, when you unpin it, it means you want to take the focus off of that. And what Chelsea done was they unpinned the Chilwell image. Why? Because they were about to announce silver and then pin a silver image. Well, guess what's just happened? Now, some of you are probably going to think, Eunice, you're reading too much into this. But no, no, no. I'm about to back this up with another thing that's happened. And the two go together. So right now, Chelsea, as of just in the last half an hour, hour, have unpinned the Thiago Silva image that was pinned at the top of the Chelsea Twitter page. So do we have a Kai Havertz announcement coming tomorrow? Well, let's go and check our compatriots. Over Well, not compatriots. Compatriots means I'm um, flipping, you know, people from the same country. But our Twitter compatriots, yeah? Let's go over to the By Leverkusen Twitter page and let's see what has happened. This is what has happened. They've put out a pic... Well, they've put out a few pictures illustrating the first pre-season fitness tests that have begun at By Leverkusen. And guess who is absent? Yep, you guessed it. Mr. Kai Havertz. Now, Kevin Palmer um, has put out this, saying, Bayer Leverkusen social media team highlighting the players who will be with them next season, and a certain Kai Havertz is missing. Coming soon to Chelsea. Hey, I'm not saying, you know, put two and two together. Well, actually, to hell with it. I am saying put two and two together. It's happening, and I expect it. I mean, don't forget... They go off to their national teams tomorrow. So I'm probably expecting all media and everything to be done and announced maybe tomorrow? Before he flies out? Before he goes off to Germany? Well, he's in Germany already. But I mean, goes off to the German national team. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Put two and two together. I, I think I think the time we have all been waiting for is about to dawn upon us. And I think it's clear that the announcement of Kai Havertz is imminent. And it means we won't be needing this. And I saw some of you in the comments saying, oh, Eunice, uh-oh, you might have to go bald after all. You might have... Nope. 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 I refuse. Nope. I'm not going bald. No. Kai Havertz is coming to Chelsea. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd share that with you first before we get into the nitty-gritty regarding the other... The, the other... Well, the other developments. But, um, yeah... I think Kai Havertz to Chelsea 
is on the brink. I'll update you guys if anything does pop up tomorrow, and if an announcement is made, you will definitely hear it from me. That's for sure. Now, let's move into our goalkeeping situation. Um, we've had a few developments. I do want to put out one thing first before we talk about this certain goalkeeper. Let me address a situation about another goalkeeper. You guys, some of you in the comments have been asking me about Donnarumma of AC Milan. Um, there's been, there's no developments. There's nothing with Donnarumma. That's, let's just put that out there now. Even Fabrizio Romano has come out and said, Chelsea have not made any moves for Donnarumma. Nothing. That's a non-story. So pretend it, pretend it didn't happen. Pretend nothing's happened. Pretend it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> what we have done though, we've made a second offer, a second offer for Rennes goalkeeper and Senegalese goalkeeper, Edouard Mendy. Edouard Mendy, who plays for Rennes, which is ironic, and I think it tells us where this link has originated from. Petr Cech. Because where did we buy Petr Cech from in 2004? Rennes. The same club. So it's no coincidence that Petr Cech, who's done a fantastic job in terms of being able to help out and handle our transfer business, along with Marina Granovskaya at Chelsea, alongside Frank Lampard, um, it's no coincidence that we've knocked on Ren's door again for a goalkeeper because Petr Cech, I'm sure, has his contacts. And um, Edouard Mendy, we've gone in for a second offer worth around 20 million euros. I have to say, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Now, a couple of you are concerned. Not a couple of you, a few of you are concerned that um, he's 28 years old. Let's not get it twisted. 28 for a goalkeeper is young. It's young. Goalkeepers can play until they're 40. It's not a problem. Um, goalkeepers at 35 are technically at their peak. <laughs> you know, te technically. In terms of experience and, and still physical ability. They don't have to run and do as much. As long as they're still agile, they can still throw themselves about. Which you can do at 35. It's not a problem. Look at Petr Cech. We had him, how old was he when he played at Munich in the Champions League final? We kept him on after that a little bit. Um, it, honestly, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Look at Buffon. You know, look at... There's more many goalkeepers. Manuel Neuer is getting on he's still doing the business goalkeepers last a long time so 28 years old not a problem it's fine i like the fact that we're only having to bid 20 million euros and not 70 for this one that's fantastic and what about edouard mendy is he good enough a few of you are saying why not take that money and throw it at ajax why not just go and get onana i'm not so sure it's as simple as that i think with onana he is ajax's number one goalkeeper they've already let go of a few players i think it's safe to say <laughs> you know they, they've let go of ziesh they're about to let go of talia fico i mean flipping out they're gonna throw their goalkeeper away i mean they're just gonna lose all the development that they've had and onana as good as he is and i think it would be great if we did go for him petr Cech clearly has a hand in this for Edouard Mendy. Now, is Edouard Mendy good? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't know too much about him, but I've seen him already. I've seen him already, and the first place where I noticed him was at the Africa Cup of Nations, because Algeria had Senegal in the group, and then we played them in the final. And throughout the whole competition, I was following Senegal quite closely because I knew they were going to be the ones that we had to compete with if we wanted to win the damn thing. They looked like the best team in the competition until, you know, we showed what we could do. Anyway, um, <laughs> but Senegal have a quality team and Edouard Mendy played against us in that first group game. And boy, he made it hard. He made it hard. I remember praising his performance that day. We would have scored so many if it wasn't for him. <laughs> you know, he had a blinder. And I, I did notice, and I thought, let's keep it. Let's keep it. He's good. He's good. Now, the thing with Senegal at that competition is they did rotate, even goalkeepers. They rotated between Gomez and they rotated between uh, M Mendy. So what some games Mendy would play, some games Gomez would play. We played against Senegal in the group stage and faced Mendy. And then when we played them in the final, we faced Gomez. So um, it's, it's, you know, his rotation going on. But he seems like a decent keeper. He seems really good. Um, now, I again, I don't know too much about him, but I've got a few stats that are here. He's got a 78% save percentage. Um, he's a great cross collector, apparently. Throwbacks to Petr Cech because, <laughs> because of Ren and the link at Ren. Um, he's cheaper. 
He's very tall. He's six foot five. Six foot five and a half, I think. So nearly six foot six. He makes himself big. And that's that's good. Especially for the one problem that we did have in the past season, which was aerial duels. And goalkeeper trying to come out and win in the air at six foot five and a half. I think he has the advantage. <laughs> I think he's catching everything. So that helps a lot. A lot. So would it be good for 20 million euros? Hell yes. Hell yeah. And he's definitely in contention for beating Kepa to the number one spot. A hundred percent. He has the ability to beat Kepa to the number one spot. We saw the preseason game yesterday against Brighton. Kepa, he looked okay. I'm not going to say he had, a, he had a horror show. He looked all right. We can't read too much into it. But in terms of his confidence, in terms of where he is, I think the pressure is just too high. He needs to go out on a loan. Um, I agree with Yan. Football therapy. Good old Yan. He, he said on his videos, a few of his videos regarding Kepa, that um, it's, not, it's, it's nothing against Kepa. And his ability. He has the ability. His confidence is wrecked. And he, it looks like he, he doesn't have anything mentally to be able to claw himself back. And as soon as, as long as he stays at Chelsea. And as long as he tries even harder at Chelsea. The risk is that he's going to fail even harder. He needs to go elsewhere to a new environment. New team. New surroundings. And start from zero. And build himself up again. And then probably come back. I think there's too much pressure on at Chelsea. And the Premier League. And one mistake can cost him. And that's the thing. With Edouard Mendy coming in. I do think he has the ability to beat Kepa to that number one spot and what is 70 million sitting on the bench going to, to, to do it's not going to be worth anything even if Chelsea wanted to sell he needs to play so maybe a loan move for Kepa would be best I don't know though I don't think we are going to do that I do think Kepa will stick around but Mendy for 20 million euros great fantastic now as we wrap up the video I want to give uh, just a little bit of attention to Declan Rice from at ex West Ham United employee, so ex WHU employee, it's a very, very reliable West Ham source. And he has contacts within Chelsea as well. Very, very good Twitter account. And his information is accurate. He was the, well, I'd say one of the first ones to report on, on the bids that we made for Edouard Mendy before anyone else. And now it's come out as true. I, I trust what he says and things that he said did has end up coming uh, coming to pass. He's put out that he's scared that Chelsea will eventually get Declan Rice at the end of this window. Chelsea are obviously going for a goalkeeper and the focus is on that after Kai Havertz. Um, he's put this out though. Let's read this. My fear is the move will happen at the end of the window and give us very little time to get anyone in. I hope so much we keep him. And so far, no bid from Chelsea. But there is still a long time in this window. Chelsea may need to sell first too. And I agree with that. I think we would need to uh, look at our centre-back options in terms of Rüdiger, in terms of Christensen. I do believe maybe it's going to be Christensen. Tomori going out on a loan, even though personally I would love him to stay. But maybe a loan move is best, especially if we get Thiago Silva in. Um, yeah, all of those... You look at our midfield options, it'd be good but in terms of trying to fill in for N'Golo Kante if we ever need it. But we have Ampadu and we have Billy Gilmore who's going to come back from injury in terms of that. So it's, it's you know, we've got enough cover in that department. But our centre-back situation, yeah, maybe we need to look at our options before we actually go in for Declan Rice. Um, but he's put it he's put it out. He's, he's scared that Chelsea will make the move and will offer the money. Now, if anyone's scared about our finances, I might actually do a video on this tomorrow. Just to go into detail. But we are technically still in profit. Net profit. If you look at from 2019. The uh, players that we've sold. With the players that we've bought. Including Hazard and Morata and all of that. Up to now. We are technically just a bit still in profit. So it tells you our business has been immaculate. Flipping amazing. So I might go a little bit into more detail about it tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Declan Rice to Chelsea. I think it's going to, I think it's on. I think it's on. Maybe not now. Maybe next transfer window. But 
I think there's a good chance at the end of this window or near the end we might actually go in for him. But we'll see what happens anyway. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen's Twitter war. Um, <laughs> and what's going on there. Well, it's not a Twitter war. I'm just, you know, putting words in my own mouth. But um, Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen's Twitter antics. Let me know what you think. Do you think Kai Havertz will be announced tomorrow? Let me know. Um, let me know what you think about Edouard Mendy, our goalkeeper, uh, Pursuit. For 20 million euros. Let me know. What do you think about Declan Rice? Do you think it will happen this window? Do you think it will happen next window? Do you think we'll make a move? Let me know what you think. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash that like button for me. Let's try and get this one again to 5,000 likes. And then if you do that, we're going to up it to 6. It's as simple as that. We up the game on this channel. So let me know. <laughs> Hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts. Um, my social media links are in the description. And I'll see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.